So first thing I want to do, I want to move my my initial cursor to where I want to start the tracking. So at some point, a ball will be placed and it will roll down the the ramp. So let's have a look here. So we got an initial idea of the ball entering the frame just about there, and because I've got I've got three repeats of this. Um, experiment and I want to make sure that I find a location that I can perform the analysis from that will be the same for each of the three repeats. So somewhere there I can see my incoming ball is coming down the ramp so it's accelerating, gaining velocity and I'm going to put my initial marker there. So you can see this black little arrow that is the initial point that we're going to perform our tracking from. The other point on the right hand side is the end point. So again, I'm gonna drag that back to a point where we can end the tracking. And from the collision point, which is probably here, we can extend the end point to somewhere here, potentially. Okay, so we don't need to go too far. Okay, somewhere there is good. We've got our beginning point and we've got our end point where we want to perform the tracking analysis. So the tracking analysis is relatively straightforward once you've done it once or twice. The first thing we can do is set up our coordinate axis. And in this case, because we're going to calculate momentum with respect to X and Y, where we position this isn't too important the calculations will, will always work out relative to X and Y, no matter where we put this reference frame. But for um, simplicity purposes, I'm going to place it right at the center of the collision. So at the center of that first ball, and there's a little arrow here, a little line, I should say, which enables me to set the orientation of the X-axis. So somewhere centered on the ramp, so when the ball comes off the ramp, it will follow along the x-axis. So we can take a quick look at some point during that transit and we can see yeah, that the ball is coming along the x-axis. So that's the um, reference frame set. We can remove that by clicking on the icon again. The next job we want to do is to set a calibration measurement for distance. So the analysis of tracker needs to know a figure for distance so we can set up a calibration stick and to set the calibration stick I'm going to zoom in to to the object I'm going to use to cal calibrate and I'm going to use this center the stationary um, ball here so I know the diameter of this ball from measuring it in the lab so if I press shift and then I can click one point and then another point I know this diameter is 30 millimeters so I've got 0 0.03 meters and that's the calibration done. I can again click on this icon to, rem to hide the calibration bar. While I'm here, I might as well set up the tracking of the central stationary object. So if I click on create, point mass, and then hold shift and control or shift and command if it's a Mac, and aim for somewhere in the center of this object, I'm gonna place the center of mass. So somewhere here. So one click does it, and if I've done two clicks, I lose the control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the, the settings window that pops up automatically. I'm gonna delete that attempt. That didn't really work because I double clicked. Again, Shift and Command on my Mac. Somewhere in the center there. And now what I wanna do is I want to change the size of this in initial circle so it encompasses most of this spherical ball. So let's drag that back and forth until it's roughly the extent of the ball. Somewhere there is fantastic. The next step, I want to change the size of the search box so that when the ball is moving, the tracking software will search for it inside this box. So I want the box to be relatively big so that between frames, it will always be inside this box. So we're not gonna lose the object that we wanna track. 
Now that's all set up and it's easy from now. I just press search and the software will start tracking this object, which initially doesn't move, of course, because the incoming ball will take a second or two to arrive. And here we can see the incoming ball arriving. It's going to collide with the stationary object and tracking really has to start working. Okay, so it's completely normal if you see a, a pause in the tracking and the auto tracking. So the pause occurs because the software is saying, I think I've, I've tracked the object, but the tracking score is below some threshold. And I think I need a human to verify that it's tracking okay. So I can see that this, this circle is relatively overlaid with the ball. And I think that's good. I think it's tracking. The difficulty here is that the software cannot track these metal objects too clearly because the metal objects don't have a clear contrasty color. They've got lots of reflections that you can see on them from the room lights. And hence it's difficult for software to track these varying kind of intensities of colors and, and shades. So I can press accept. I can think, I can see that that circle has followed the ball and likewise for this one. For some of your videos, this will be the case where you have to use a little bit of manual tracking and then it takes over. It will auto track as we can see here. And it's going to auto track until the end of our video that we've set here, this, this, this end point. First object, I'm gonna close the auto tracking window. And before I forget, I wanna make sure that I set up this mass, this, this central um, stationary object. I want to make sure that I've set the, the mass correctly for it. So the mass for this object, if I remember correctly, is 110 grams. So that's 110 grams. So I go to this little window at the very top. You can see that it's in kilograms. So I need to go 0 0.110 kilograms. And that's done. I might as well rename the object. I'll call it a big instead of just some token name. And that's tracked. Again, we can quickly mouse over to some of the initial data. And of course, I'm interested in momentum. So I can, of course, select momentum along X here. And I can verify that initially the ball is not moving. So it's got zero momentum. And after around 0.3 seconds, the incoming ball it collides and this stationary ball gains momentum. And negative momentum is left, going towards the left of the screen. If you remember correctly, our reference frame is centered here. So negative direction is to the left, positive direction is to the right. So we've got um, numbers that kind of make sense. Although, yes, this, so this is 10 to the minus two kilograms per meters, meters second. So it's, it kind of makes sense. I can also change the table by clicking on table. I'm not really interested in positional data. Again, I can just select the momentum data and just drag the columns over so I can see them clearly. So I've got time, I've got X momentum and Y momentum. And we're gonna use this data a little bit later on. So that's the first mass that's tracked. Let's go and record the second mass. We go back to the initial position and we have to, I guess, scroll over to where that incoming mass is. Good. So this is the mass in transit. I can tell that the frame rate of the camera didn't keep up with this mass. So perhaps the frame rate wasn't fast enough. Um, but there still should be enough information here to track it. So again, we do exactly the same as we did for the initial mass. I can go to create point mass. And again, if I press shift and control or shift and command on the Mac, I will roughly aim for where the center is. Now, if we don't know where the center of this blurry ball is, one trick is to click on create and go to measuring tools. And you can fit a circle to objects that you think sh should be spherical. And if I press shift, I can click on three points and the software will fit a, a circle to this, to this shape. So 
it helps sometimes if you are dealing with a blurry spherical object. And again, if I go to mass A now, right click, I'll name it small for small sphere. Right click that again. And if I go to auto tracker, I can now do this shift control click combination to set this to set the track point to be the center there i can now extend the the shape size this red circle roughly get it to where i think i've got a sphere now unfortunately you can see in the images above that the template and the match this is not an ideal object to track because it's full of reflections these reflections will change and for software, this will make it quite difficult. So I'm expecting to have to help this software track this object because the object is, is very shiny and it's not very contrasty. It doesn't have a fixed kind of pattern that we can follow. And um, so I've extended the search box so that we can keep track of it. And I'll just push it to one side. There we go. So that's the search box. And again, click on search. And I'm expecting to have to help it along, but it seems to be doing a relatively good job for the first few frames. Off it goes. So let's go and follow it. So I'll scroll over. Okay, so it's got to a point and it's stopped and it wants my help. Okay, so I can see quite clearly that the circle that it thinks the object is, isn't really overlaid with the real object. So I can use shift and control or shift and command and position the search point to be the center of where I think the center of the sphere is. So somewhere there. Good. And now it's tracking the recoil. Good. I think it's doing a reasonably good job and it's gotten to the end of the frame. So good. That's the end of the, the tracking. Um, so as we can see, it's not so difficult. I'm going to close the tracking window. What I want to make sure is um, I can set the the um, parameters of this object. So again, we go to small. By default, it's one kilogram. So the mass of the smaller ball is 0 0.0326 grams. This is what we measured in, in the lab. So it's 32.6 grams. And now that is set, good. Um, that's, all we, that's all we need to, to enter for the, for the sphere, for that small ball. And I can delete this other object, this circle A that we fitted earlier. Delete that. So we got small and big. And of course we can start checking out the data that Tracker has produced. So it starts with the positional data, X and Y, which it gets directly from our calibration and time. And then from that positional data, it can derive all of the other data, including velocity and then momentum since we've given it the mass. So momentum X, for example. So the ball is going in the left direction, so it's really negative. It hits the um, stationary ball, and then it starts to rebound to the right-hand direction, which is positive. So it rebounds and continues on, on its way to the right-hand side. So it's always worth checking the collision point. So if I, if I click um, any point I can see the frame associated with that point and I can check that my auto tracker has picked up the object relatively correctly. Again you can see that the frame rate of the camera didn't resolve the transit of the incoming ball really well but I think this is relatively centered. This frame is relatively well tracked otherwise. And if I click on the next frame I'm coming towards the object so I haven't collided yet and the collision point is here by the looks of it. Okay, so somewhere between frame 10 and frame 11, we have a collision. So again, let's go to the data table. Let's change what's displayed in the data table to just the momentum components, so PX and PY. And we can close that. And now we've got our data sets. So this is for um, one of the repeat data sets and I want to, to kind of store this data. So let's firstly go to the big sphere. I'm going to copy this data. So I've got zero. I've got most of the data selected. Yeah, that's all selected. 
So I can copy that. Control C is another way of doing it. I can copy that. And now I'm going to paste it into my spreadsheet. This is the first repeat. You can see that the formatting of the numbers is all over the place. It's not really consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these columns, go to format, and I'm going to change it to scientific notation. And I'm going to reduce the precision so it's easier to read. So that's the first data set for the large ball. And now we'll look at the data set for the small ball. So again, I'll select from that point until the end point, copy and paste. Now that we've determined the momentum along X and Y for both objects, next we want to determine the total momentum. Firstly, along the X direction, and here we can simply sum up the two components of X for the two objects. We can then drag down the cell to copy that calculation for all the rows. And likewise, for the overall vertical component of momentum, we add up the two individual vertical components for both objects. Again, we copy the calculation for all the rows. And finally, we want to combine these two components, the overall X and the overall Y component to determine the resulting momentum vector. And this is determined by calculating the square root of the sum of the two components squared. And finally, we can calculate this for all the different times. And from here, we can check whether our momentum before is similar to our momentum after the collision.